Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As requested, in this video I will do a tutorial on how to play your classic Nintendo Entertainment Systems NES and Famicom games on your computer. This free method will allow you to play your favorite NES games such as Castlevania, Metroid, Contra and Super Mario on your PC. <laughs> If you are new to the channel, do consider subscribing to this channel. It is free and it will really help the channel grow. Thank you. First released in Japan as the family computer or the Famicom in 1983 by Nintendo, it was later remodeled and re-released to the world as the Nintendo Entertainment System or the NES. The NES is an 8-bit third generation video gaming console and is currently the 8th most sold home video gaming console in history, selling over 61 million units worldwide. The NES featured a number of iconic awesome games such as Metroid, Super Mario Bros and Contra. In this video, I will show you how you can play your classic NES and Famicom on your PC. There is no installation needed as the emulator we will be using. Mezen is a lightweight software and doesn't require much system requirement to run classic NES games. This emulator is free and support light gun games and Famicom disc games. Today, I will go through the installation guide, game control configuration, light gun game setup, my NES game recommendation, and the Famicom disc game setup. We have a lot to go through today, so before we begin, we would appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel so that more people would be able to see this video as well. Alright, let's start. First, please click on the second link in the video description to download NESPC.zip. Alternatively, you can directly download the Mezen emulator from the main website by using the third link in the description. Here, I had downloaded NESPC.zip from the second link in the description. Using WinZip or WinRAR, we will extract the file. Inside the zip file, there will be a NES PC folder. Select the folder and drag the file to your PC desktop. Now, go ahead and delete the zip file as we won't be needing it anymore. There will be a file and folder inside the NES PC folder. In the folder are some ROM hacks that you can use to play and test the emulator. The other file is the NES emulator that we will be using. Double click on the Mezen emulator and a window will appear. It will show you the recently played games, making it easier for you to jump back to your last game. Alright, let's start with the control configuration. Click on options, and go to input settings. Here you can configure your controls. Select standard control and click on setup. A menu will appear, click the button and configure it accordingly. You can use your keyboard. But here I'm using the USB NES controller for that extra retro feel. Now click the on-screen button to configure and press the physical button on your controller to set it up. Once done, press OK. Now before we play, we need to get some game ROMs to play. ROMs are digital backup copies of games extracted using a dumper from your original cartridge. Both NES and Famicom games uses a .NES file extension format. To get your ROMs, you can use a dumper such as the Benven NES Car Dumper to extract the ROMs file. Another way is to simply, Google search for NES ROMs. They are pretty easy to find and are often very small. Archive.org is another website you can search for them. Here, I have a folder of my favorite NES games ROMs which I had made a backup on my PC using the Benven NES cartridge dumper. Select the game and drag it into the emulator. Let's play Castlevania. This game was released in 1987. In this 2D side-scrolling action-adventure game, you play as Simon Belmont, a vampire hunter who has been called upon to enter Count Dracula's castle to destroy him. Playing this game back in the day was challenging and sometimes can be frustrating as you cannot save your game progression. Every time you fail, you will have to restart the game at the start of the level. However, with this emulator, you can use the save states function to save your game progression. Click file, save states, select a slot, and click on it. The game will be saved at the exact spot. So let's test it out, we will play more of the game. To load states, click file, select load state, select the save state and click it. The game will load to where you last saved the game, which will be helpful as you return to the game again at another time. Let's load another game. Pause the current game, select another ROM and drag it onto the emulator. Let's load the Super Mario Bros. 3 from 1988. 
This game is one of the most popular games on the NES, selling more than 17 million copies worldwide. This game also won the Best Action Game Award in 1988 and was ranked 20 in the 100 Best Game Releases in History. This game is arguably one of the most excellent Mario games ever made and is definitely worth checking out. The next game I recommend checking out is Metroid from 1986. In this action-adventure game, you play as Samus Aran who travels through the planet's cavern to hunt space pirates. This game sold over 2.73 million units worldwide. This was their first entry to the franchise. Metroid was later released on every Nintendo hardware from the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, SNES, N64, GameCube, DS, 3DS, Wii, and most recently on the Nintendo Switch with Metroid Dread. Next, let's take a look at another classic. Gradius. This game was released in 1985 on the NES by Konami. This horizontal scrolling shooter game was the first entry to the Gradius series. In this game, you acquire capsules that can be used to power up your ship. Upon getting this capsule, you can spend them immediately for a speed boost or you can collect a few more to unlock powerful lasers and shields. This game was revolutionary at its release as it had great music and heavily emphasized on strategy. Playing on an emulator means that you can play homebrew games, unreleased or incomplete games, or demake games. Here, we have Indivisible, a platformer game to make of the PS4 Indivisible. Here I will show how to activate the FPS counter, under the option, go to speed, and then show FPS. Alternatively, you can press F10. You can also adjust the playing window size by selecting video size. If you are into full screen, scroll and click on full screen. Alternatively, press F11. To escape, just press F11 again. This game is fun, and it is always great to see new games being made for the NES. You can easily find this game by googling indivisible NES to makes. There are many more to makes and homebrew NES games to check out. Next. We will play my favorite NES game, Contra. The Konami code will work here as well. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. Now you will have 30 lives at the start of the game. This simulator also has a cheat menu. Start by pausing the game, go to tools, then select and click on cheats. A cheat menu will appear. And here is where you will input your cheats. Click on Add Cheats. These are Game Genie cheats. Go to GameGenie.com, go to the NES section and search for the game. Next scroll down and look for Contra. Here are the list of Game Genie cheats available on the left is the code and on the right is what it does. Let's add the Infinite Life cheats, highlight, and copy the code. Now go back to the cheat menu. Give the cheat code a name. Paste the code from the website under Game Genie and click OK. Let's add one more cheat, let's do a flamethrower. Go back to Game Genie website, copy the code. Paste it on the cheat menu, and press OK. Now we have two cheats activated. Let's restart the game. The game will restart but nothing will take place. You will still have to life and start with a standard gun. But when you are killed, the cheats will be activated. Even though it shows that you have only two life, you are now invincible with infinite life, and your starting gun will be a flamethrower. Next, let's look at how to set up the emulator for Duck Hunt. Instead of the zapper, we will use your mouse as the gun. Go to the Options tab, then select and click Input. Under Expansion Port select Zapper and click on Setup. Here you will determine your light gun radius. The larger the radius, the easier it is. I'm just going to keep it small. Let's start the game. Oh, just one more thing. Pause the game, go to Inputs and then click on the Advanced tab. Uncheck the Hide Mouse Pointer when using the Zapper. Unchecking this will make the mouse pointer visible when playing the game. Click OK. And now we can see the mouse pointer in the game. We are all ready to play. Go ahead, click away and hunt the duck. 
Lastly, this simulator also supports the Famicom Disk games, but you will need to find the Nintendo Famicom Disk BIOS file, this file is copyrighted but they are relatively easy to find with a simple Google search. Also, Famicom Disk game ROMs will use a .fds file format instead of .nes. Once you have these two files, drag the ROM onto the emulator and let it start. Here we are playing Super Mario Bros. 2, an expanded, more brutal and challenging version of the Super Mario world. And there you go guys, that's how you play your NES and Famicom games on your PC. I will cover more emulator videos in the next few weeks from SNES, N64, GameCube, Wii, 3DS, Dreamcast, Sega Saturn and PlayStation 2. If you enjoy this content, do remember to press the like button and subscribe to the channel so you will be notified when we release new content. With that, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and stay safe.